Here at the Watercrest Line, rolling stock and visiting locomotives can arrive two ways. The first one is down at Alsford via a low loader, and the second one is right behind me. Our fringe, the bridge between us and the main line. Now we've briefly touched on how it works in Alton, but that's not really the interesting part. The interesting bit is what happens on that side. And for this episode, I'm delighted to welcome you guys to Woking Signaling Centre. This is going to be a good one. Well, hello folks and welcome to the Watercrest Line. Now, before we dive in properly into Woking and what we're looking at, it's always good to understand where it fits into the grand scheme of things. So let's start at Medstead. Now, Medstead is arguably the uh, simplest lever frame we have with um, not what it has, but what it doesn't have compared to the other boxes. Up here is the diagram. This shows the area of Medstead and Formark's box control. If you've seen some of our other signaling videos where we've been based at Ropley, you'll notice that there's something missing here, namely track circuitry detection. At the moment, we have no idea where any trains are. And that's the basic form. The way you find out is you look out the window and also by the signalman's memory and also their well, experience. At the more advanced end of the stuff you see at the Watercrest line, you have Alton here. This is called an IFS panel, Individual Function Switch. And believe it or not, this actually works in a very similar way to our lever frame boxes, in the sense that each switch on this panel corresponds to one of the levers. So for example, we have the point lever. Flick the switch, the motors will activate the points, move them over and lock them in position. Instead of a diagram being above your head and you have to look up to it, it's actually now down here in front of you and it gives you a bit more information. Where you had to look again at those brass panels to see what your signals were doing, well, it's all lit up on here. With regards to the trains itself, this time we can see the train tracking along the panel as it leaves and the signals will automatically go back to danger once they've been passed, which is something you do not get with lever frames. Now, let's go to Woking. Now, first of all, before we go any further, thank you so much to the guys here and to Network Rail for letting us film here. This is a view you do not normally get to see. Now, the big panel behind me, everything lit up, covers a very big area, much bigger than the Alton section, understandably. So pretty much everywhere, Surbiton all the way down to Bayland's, you've got Brookwood, Woking, Waveridge, you name it. This is obviously quite a big area to control, so the system has been designed just to do that. So what are we actually looking at? Well, behind me is called an NX panel, Entry Exit. Compared to Alton and lever frame box, you don't have to individually set a particular set of points, put in the facing point locks, and then pull a particular lever or flick a particular switch to go a particular direction. It's a bit more advanced than that. When the signalers behind me want to set a route, all they have to do is select the entry signal and the signal at the end of the signal section. The system will then see if it's A, a valid route. It will then swing the points, make sure there's no trains in the section, and then clear the signal. And that's what you can see behind. The display at the back is the diagram. That is what's happening right now. You can see the head codes for the trains, the reds represent the trains, like in all the other panels, and the whites represent the routes that's been set. Now essentially the head codes work, the number at the start is what type of train it is. So a class one is an express passenger, class two is a stopping, five is an empty coaching stock, and it goes on. Below me is the mimic. That is the actual control system. Every signal has a button and you can set the routes between every single signal. The signalman can also lock out the points if they want to and they have a lot of other displays to give them relevant bits of information. But that's not the bit we're interested in. The bit we're interested in is right next to me. Now the panel behind me is Woking Panel 3 and essentially it works in the same way as the big one off to my side. The signalman still sets the route by clicking between the signals and the system will automatically set the points. This is the fringe between Woking Signaling Centre and Alton Signal Box. Now, initially, if we wanted to send the train over before the signaling was updated, you'd have a ground frame and its key, uh, lots of phone calls and a guy with a flag. Now it's all done literally with a flick of a switch. If I, in Woking, wanted to send the train to Alton, for example, if I wanted to send 1F38, which is um, class 450 down there, 
for whatever reason. All you'd do is talk to the Alton signalman, with the flick of a lease at our end, they'd move the points and you'd be able to signal the trains straight in. So what does it look like from Alton Box? And welcome back to Alton. Now on the line of um, the electric units coming onto the Watercrest line, well, that's not as ridiculous as it sounds, because it actually happened. When they were in testing, they needed some sort of area to test out away from the network to make sure they wouldn't have any detrimental effects on signaling, so they chose the Watercrest line. They hooked up a diesel to the back to be uh, essentially a portable generator and drove it up and down. So, yeah, a Class 450 electric unit running from also to Rockley. That's some stuff you don't see any day. Anyway, back into Alton Box, and we've lit up the panel. So you can see now, if I were to flick a signal on the panel, it would actually show up as the aspect that it's currently displaying on the ground. So it really helps work out what your signals are doing. Of course, at Woking, it was one step up from that, so actually routes lighting up. So we've got the box open. Let's say, for example, we've got a train sitting out in a Mion loop that wants to go into the main line. Let's make it happen. So now we're going to take the release. I've got George behind me supervising and tracking it to Woking. Woking will now send through a release to our slot. And once he's entered through, three lights popped up. I can now release my points on 22. I can roll the points over, which is now setting the route for the main line. And finally, he'll then give us the extra slot so we can now clear the signal. Easy as that. And there you are, the signal boxes on our side and on the big railway. Thank you so much to George, Nick, everyone at Woking and Network Rail for letting us film all of this. It was absolutely wonderful and a fantastic insight, something you don't normally get to see. Apart from that, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button, and we'll see you next time.